turned into, I'm just here to help, man. I'm going to get you through this painful part of your life as painlessly as possible. And they started opening up to me and they started telling me their stories. And I hate to break it to you, but the story I heard most, I call the Mr. Johnson story. You know, Mr. B, they said, I, I used to be pretty good at math. You know, I was actually like, you know, I liked it until I had Mr. Johnson in third grade. And I know, I, he made me feel stupid and told me I couldn't do it. And, you know, ever, ever since then, I, I've never really liked it being good at it. I've heard that story far too many times. My students, other students, their parents, adults, my teachers at school. It's tragic. This shouldn't be. Because these stressed out kids become stressed adults. Do you know that in the last 40 years we've had a term called math anxiety? I'm not kidding. Do you know that there are books and books about math anxiety? You're laughing, but I ain't kidding. I didn't make this stuff up. You go Google this and you will find dozens of books. Here are a few of my favorite titles. Conquering Math Anxiety. You need Math Man for that. Math, a four-letter word. And my personal favorite, Math Doesn't Suck. Something's got to change about this. Do you see English anxiety or, or you know, Spanish anxiety or whatever? No. Math anxiety for 40 years. That the, just the term has been around. You know, if I were smart, I would be some enterprising young pharmaceutical company guy, and I would say, with all the Prozac and Zoloft that's going on, <laughs> Math Man would design Algebrex to help reduce math anxiety, but watch out for the possible side effects. Nausea, vomiting, high blood pressure, and insomnia due to sudden and unexplainable inability to count sheep. I know I'm joking about that, but I've met adults with this. It's no joke. I just bring up math, and they want to like, confess everything. That they're shaking. I know, it, it sounds funny, but it's, it's a real deal. It's not the fakey fakey. Then why are we still teaching this algebra stuff? Here's why. Math gives us two different kinds of reasoning. Deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. That's the part that we take away from math. Deductive reasoning is a series of connected logical steps that leads to conclusion. For example, if I uh, don't hang out with my friends after school, I'll go to the library and study. If I go to the study, I'm going to get an A on the test. If I get an A on the test, mom's going to be happy. Therefore, if I don't hang out with my friends at the mall after school, my mom will be happy. Deductive reasoning. We need that. We use that in everyday life. Inductive reasoning is where we look at data, we find a pattern, and we make a generalization based on the data. If I cram for my science test and get an A, hmm. If I cram next day for my English test and get an A, oh. Hey, this is working, isn't it? Therefore, it works all the time. Now, that's not foolproof, but that is a kind of reasoning that we use. Math gives us those same kinds of reasoning. Here's an example of deductive reasoning in math. If 2x minus 1 equals 9, then therefore 2x must equal 10, therefore x equals 5. We all get that. But your math teacher gives you 20 million of those problems to do for homework the next day and expects you to make the inductive reasoning leap. Ah, every time I see a problem like that, this is how I solve that. It's that leap, actually, which I find the most challenging as a math teacher. Not how to do one problem, but how to do them all that look kind of like that. But if there's a zero next to the x, then the whole thing falls apart. So inductive reasoning doesn't stick all the time, but it is something what you use all the time. Is there an answer? Yes. 